after 26 years of marriage and raising two boys. Yeah, well, we're still working on that part. For grabbing our cameras to have some fun. Photography, travel, parenting, marriage, and life. Let's get real about all of it. Oh, and did we mention we're converting a school bus too? I'm Trish. I'm Steve. And together, we're we're Team Team Rawls. Well, we're going to, I'm going to go under the bus. You're going to throw me under the bus. Oh. We're going to go under the bus. I'm going to hold the, the nut on the other side of each one of these 500,000 screws. And you're going to run the drill from this side and loosen the screws. Okay. So we can pull these plates up. And once we pull these plates up, we can probably pull the floor up. Yay! I mean, we're start pulling the floor All right, up. let's get going. So optimistic. Ah, we were so optimistic, weren't we? We were. <laughs> okay, got it. Got it? Okay. Got it? I got it. Well, I thought I had it. Okay, I got it. Now let's go back up to the other row. Okay. Go right across from the one you just did. All right, further towards the outside of the bus or towards the inside of the bus? Yeah, the outside of the bus. That's okay, oh uh, yeah, I got it. I see it, I see it. Got it. Just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with, if you imagine the back of the bus, here's the wheels, the door, and the floor, we're going to show you a little cross section right there of where the rails sit. So you have the base of the the metal structure and then above that you have plywood on both sides of the rail and then you have laminate that's on top of that and the rail sits right in here and it kind of goes down a little ways and then there's a bolt that's right here and that goes down below through the structure and the nut is below the base metal structure of the bus, and the rest of the bolt is down there. So Steve was down under the bus holding onto that while I was on top of the bus unscrewing right here. Um, and those are just the ones that we could reach. So sometimes you run into where, like, that's the gas tank or the fuel tank, and you can't get to those, or there might be some other kind of, you know, undercarriage something under there. Um, so if these strip, it's not easy to get these out. I know it looked like that went really fast, but how long do you think it actually took to get those rails out? Well, two days. Or two or, weeks. Well, yeah. but we didn't work on it every day, yeah. all day long for two weeks. We, it was sporadic. Yeah, when we, yeah when it we was. Had time we worked on it, when we didn't, we didn't. It was crazy. But, yeah. It's like it might be stripping it. Yeah, because it doesn't look like the thing's turning. Yeah, yeah, it's stripping it, huh? No, it's, no, it's not. It's stripped. Yeah, dang it. One of the issues that we had was a lot of those bolts, because they're Allen head bolts. Uh, a lot of those bolts became stripped, and yeah. w- once it once it was stripped, uh, then you couldn't you couldn't turn it. I was actually feeling kind of bad because I thought that I was stripping a lot of them because this this impact drill, basically you have to press really hard down to keep it in there, and then kind of go and loosen it in little spurts, and I was just going, <laughs> which I think was tending to strip some of the bits or. Yeah, as well, strip the bit and strip the bolt. Uh, but Steve said he was even stripping them, but they were just so tight and just so packed in there um, that we ended up going to just a, what do you call that? Like just a manual uh, wrench? Uh, a ratchet with a, a ratchet, socket. A ratchet with a socket. And then there were some that were stuck, like we couldn't even get to. They were well, there between. Was, yeah, there were some that were between the fuel tank and the floor that you couldn't see and you couldn't reach and you couldn't put a wrench on them. But we had to get them out, so yeah. we were kind of getting desperate. <laughs> we were just really, like, really okay, desperate. let's just try 
sheer muscle, right? Yeah, and that didn't go too well either. Oh God, of course. That's gonna be a problem. Oh, can I even grind that out? I don't know. Back up for a second. And if you're squeamish, you might look away right now. <laughs> don't call OSHA on us or anything. Clearly, we don't know what we're doing, at hey. least with getting rails out. <laughs> we know what we're doing. But that was the only time we did that. So um, we it was clear that we had to go to the grinding method of getting these bolts out. Steve got to work grinding and the nails that had held the subfloor, the, the plywood came out. I mean, you could grind those off really easily. Even I did that. Um, but then he also had to grind out the rails themselves, which were aluminum, and then the bolts, which were steel. Even the grinder was no match for this job. Don't buy cheap stuff. You know, I bought this Genesis angle grinder because um, I didn't think I needed a really good angle grinder to do what we're doing. But after the third time to use it, it basically fell apart. So after a trip to the hardware store, I did what I should have done to begin with. I bought a quality piece of equipment, Makita. This will do everything this one didn't do and last for years. Good stuff. $20 more, I get quality. $20 less, I get junk. Of course, there was like a $200 one there, wasn't there? I didn't need a $200 one though. How do you know? We might be going back to get the $200 the $200 one. one was big. No. For 20 extra bucks, I got quality. This one, not so much. Wait for it. Wait for it. What? What's it doing? Look at it. Smoking. Yeah, it's wore out. I've, I've ruined it already. How? I, I don't know. Look at it. Overheating? Yeah. All right, well, that one goes back. So much for that. While Steve went back to the hardware store to get another grinder, I decided to keep prying up flooring that was not bound by the wheelchair rails. Ah, <sighs> that's so satisfying. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that we have learned, uh, I, actually we already knew this, but uh, lots of trips to the hardware store. I took the Makita back and went with the third choice, which is a skill. So we'll see. We're going to see if this one will, will solve our problems and uh, last us a little while. So third time's a charm. Third time's a charm, or third strike and you're out. That should do it. Let's find out. verdict is in for let's see so the first grinder was a Genesis that I bought about a year ago and I paid about $45 for it I think um, the second grinder that we purchased this morning was a Makita and it was close to a hundred bucks and it lasted about five minutes which is not good for Makita I'm sorry Makita so we went back and we went back with this uh, skill which I was a little skeptical about, but for $53.99, turns out it's a great 
angle grinder. So there you go. We went cheap, we went more expensive, and we went back kind of middle of the road. Although this is cheap, I wouldn't call it middle of the road. And it seems to be great. So if you are considering buying a bus and doing conversion, um, stop what you're doing and listen to this. In our case, with uh, how many rails did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We had eight rows of these rails, these aluminum handicap rails. And each row had, I don't know, just this rail itself has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws in it and I have already cut it off. There's so, probably about 20 in each row. There's probably 20 screws in each one of these at least. So if you end up with a bus with these rails, uh, I think it's probably, you probably have two choices. One, work, work, work to get them out or figure out how to work around them and leave them in. But in our case, we couldn't leave them in. Uh, they would interfere with the, the subfloor and the insulation, so they had to come out. We're not sure what we will do next. I think we're going to take a breather and just ex exhale for a few days. Um, but there probably will be a second flooring video because that was literally just getting those rails out and getting the subfloor out. We still have to patch the holes, seal it, put in the new, put in the new subfloor, etc. So there'll be another flooring video. Um, but remember, we're not professionals. We're just we're figuring this out as we go. In fact, we were watching a YouTube video. Well, we're kind of went down the rabbit hole of YouTube videos. <laughs> was it last night about filling holes in the floor and it was so funny because we were watching one guy and we both kind of thought this guy doesn't know what he's doing and literally a second later he said I have no clue what I'm doing well and he said if you really want to learn <laughs> yeah. anything about how to do this you need to find another video yeah I have no go clue find another doing. video anyway we just want to wish you all a happy 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 2021 yay as our first video of the year uh, remember to subscribe Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and remember, we're gonna be doing more videos than just bus videos. We're gonna be talking about other things, but it just seems like this bus is consuming us right now. But we are really looking forward to 2021, and we're just so excited about all the, the schooly life community that we have met out there. And, and um, anyway, just- Happy have, New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.